and welcome to Random but Useful Accessories for Your Heat Printing Business. In today's class, um, I'm Courtney Kabitza and I'm going to be focusing a lot on different accessories and tools and things that you may not have thought of, simple things that you may have already sitting around your heat printing business and also um, some more advanced items that you can use to help to improve your production, to speed up your heat printing or your transfer production and get your shop more organized. And I know we could all stand to be a little bit more organized as well. And so we've got a lot of fun and unique things to share there with that. Um, and so as I start the class today, I have the room here scattered with about 40 different items that we're gonna go over um, throughout today, sh showcasing different items you can use in your heat printing business. Um, so we'll break them up by alignment um, and tips for getting things lined up straight. We're going to share some tools that you can use for printing faster, printing more effectively. Um, so we'll share those over at the heat press. And then we also have a lot of ideas for storing or creating transfers from screen printed transfer storage to speeding up heat transfer vinyl production. Um, so a lot of fun and exciting things to share with you today. Um, to start, I'm going to head over to the area I have set up for alignment um, with the laser alignment tool and some rulers and things and talk about simple tools that you can use for that. And so here on my heat press, I've got a couple of things that are simple that I can use when I'm lining up my shirt. Of course, when you're lining graphics, the, that's probably one of the largest challenges that I hear from decorators is how do I make sure it's lined up straight? How do I ensure that I have everything in an accurate placement? Um, and so I'm going to share three different tools that you can use for alignment, kind of starting with the most basic up through the most advanced. But the important thing when you load shirts on is that your shirt always has to be straight or loaded on properly because if your shirt's not loaded on properly, even a, a tool that's going to tell you to go three inches down or a ruler that's going to tell you to do that won't be um, effective or useful if your shirt's loaded on crooked. So the first thing I've done or I'll do is I always load the shirt by splitting it and loading it onto my platen. I use the threading method because the heat presses here are able to be threaded. If you're unable to actually thread your garments um, and you have to lay them up on top here, the same process is apply. You're going to want to make sure that when you load your shirt on center, that your collar is removed um, and the also in the placement of the center of the platen and then checking the sides to make sure that you have the right amount of material. So when I do that process, it's good to use a form of a ruler or a tool to help make sure I've got that same amount of material. Of course, you can eyeball it as well if you think that you look like you have an inch on each side, your hands are always useful. But having something as simple as a ruler or multiple rollers scattered throughout your office will help with that as well. And so I can load the shirt on straight. I can check and make sure I have the same amount of distance between each side here. If I have a little bit off, I can adjust the garment as needed. And that helps to ensure that my shirt is loaded on straight. Of course, when you pull that shirt back to pull the collar off, you want to make sure you're pulling in an even motion as well. Um, as long as that collar sets at the end of that plait and you know you're getting a straight line. From there, I may need to line up my graphic to make sure it's going to the correct placement. So for example, if I'm going three inches down, I can use my ruler as my center line to make sure I'm going three inches down on the shirt. And that kind of gives me a good starting point. Um, once that's done, I would line my transfer up and measure the sides of the, two, of the transfer to get my area of my design. Now, another tool that you could use in addition to a ruler would be a T-square. And that's going to basically have two, what looks like two rulers um, attached to them. And that would help you not only to go three inches down, but to find that center line in your design as well. So you'll know where to line up your transfers. And those, um, both of those things are available from any office store as far as purchasing for easy alignment. So that shares us two tools. And then the last one I'm going to cover is going to be more of an advanced tool for alignment. This one, um, rather than being, you know, five or $15 in an office store is going to be more around $300. I think it runs in at about $295. And that would be a laser alignment tool. It's going to give you more accuracy by using lasers to shoot um, from a tool that sits next to your heat press like this across to ensure you're getting accurate placement. And so the way a tool like this would work is prior to loading your garment, and you can kind of see a little bit of the lines that shoot across there. Um, if we can zoom in, I don't know if we can zoom in a little bit on that to see if it gets closer um, to the machine but it comes with a guide or a tool that actually has the placement line. So I essentially just line up the same way I load my shirt. So if I load my shirt on with that uh, threading method where my collar hangs below, this is where my guide's gonna be. And it runs 16 by 20, so it's gonna fit perfectly on this heat press platen for the sizing. 
And then once I have that loaded and lined up into place, the next thing I need to do is need to adjust my laser alignment tool. Um, and these lasers basically just adjust by easily changing the knobs. And then I can shoot a center line down the center here. I'm shooting a line here, which is actually known as three inches down. So that's going to tell me I definitely have three inches down for my um, crew neck shirt of where I'm placing the top of my transfer. And from this line is where the top of my transfer is going to go. Um, if I'm doing a left chest logo, I could even make a box in here so I know where my placement is. And of course, that's exactly where your transfer is going to lie within that box. The tool has um, up to four interchangeable lasers that I can adjust completely, rotate, flip. Um, and the nice thing about this guide is it does give you the top placements that are used. So I can see my center line, I can see a large back placement, I can see a split line as well as um, my left chest on the side here. But if I'm doing a youth or a ladies garment and I need something to be a little bit smaller, then I could certainly load this on and adjust the lines by using with actually a ruler on the edge here. So if I need it to only be two inches down, I can still use this guide and make sure that line shoots directly straight across at that two inch mark. So that's another great tool for lining up um, your items. While this won't be a tool, another tip that I often give when I'm thinking about finding the center of my trans or center of my shirt, if I'm just using that ruler method, is to simply take the shirt prior to printing, fold it in half, and then create that little bit of a crease mark, and you can use your heat press to do that. Once you've pressed that crease mark in place, that becomes your center line. You measure three inches, three inches down with your ruler and you're set and ready to go for printing so you can line that center of the transfer up with that center line there. So that gives us a couple of tools for um, alignment. Another thing with placement is Stalls just recently launched a placement guide ebook. So if you haven't seen that or haven't gotten the email about it, um, it's available at stalls.com. So if you just search in the search bar for placement guide, it's actually a full ebook that walks, um, walks through the placement of graphics depending on the garment you're decorating. So t-shirts, um, v-neck shirts, polo shirts, a bunch of different items and so it's really valuable to have because it helps you to understand where to place graphics on your item and it's good to have as a reference tool next to your heat press or good to have a reference tool next to your um, station where you're designing so you know where to place graphics and how large to make them. Okay, so that shares some tips for alignment. I'm going to head over to my other heat press here and I want to talk a little bit about some accessories for printing with um, the heat press and different tools that you can use here. And so when it comes to printing, we're looking for a few different things here. We're looking for ways to print more accurately, we're looking for ways to print more efficiently, and we're looking for ways to speed up production at the heat press. If you've ever attended a live Stalls TV class, you may notice that we always have a cover that comes over um, all of our bottom platens. And so on the bottom of this 16 by 20, you're noticing it's not just the standard rubber or silicone on the base here. We actually have a what we call a quick slip pad protector or a cover sheet. Um, this cover is uh, has a nonstick coating, so like a Teflon coating. That way, when I go to load garments on, I'm just going to grab that T-shirt just to show the example. Um, but it will actually load on much quicker because I have that sliding on and off and that way I can easily do fronts and backs if I have a threadable heat press and really just speed up my production. Um, the rubber, the silicone on here is going to kind of grab that shirt so it's going to make it not as quick and easy to throw them on, throw them off and easily thread the items for faster printing. So quick slip pad protectors are definitely useful in speeding up your production. When we talk about printing things um, accurately, a few things that we always look at are, first off, um, protecting our heat press, being able to use cover sheets, which are always useful. The two cover sheets I have here are used most often to protect your garment, protect your um, heat press platen from something sticking to the top of it. And there's two different styles of cover sheets. Everybody has their preference on which one they prefer to use um, the most. But we're going to look at two different styles here because there is actually a difference depending on which one that you're using. So the first one we're using um, that I'm going to show you is just a Teflon or a non-stick cover sheet. These ones are probably the more, most common used. Um, they're a lot more reusable. They're a lot more durable. Um, to be handled, they usually traditionally need two hands. And this one, actually, if you're applying it directly over a transfer, so if you're giving a second hit to a CAD print or a digital transfer, 
applying it over a inkjet or laser transfer or even a screen printed transfer, it's going to add a little bit of a gloss to it because by nature these cover sheets have a little bit of a gloss to them um, in the nonstick coating and so it's actually going to add some gloss to your transfer. So if you're trying to get that glossier appearance from the transfer that may be more matte, this can actually can help to do that. I'll set that aside and we'll talk a little bit about what we call craft paper. This one's not quite as reusable. You can certainly reuse it multiple times, but it's not going to be as long of a lifespan. I'd probably use this for maybe a job of 50 or 75 shirts and I'd probably throw it away. Um, over time it's going to tear and things like that. This one, um, in contradiction to the other one, is actually going to mat up a transfer. So if I have a semi-gloss transfer and my customer wants a finish, it's going to be much more matte. Um, same thing, a screen printed transfer, a uh, vinyl transfer, a digital transfer. If I place this over it and apply it for about five extra seconds, it'll actually mat up that transfer a little bit and take away some of that gloss. So cover sheets are always useful. Have extra ones on hand, especially if something happens and they get destroyed, something sticks to them, ink from a garment or ink from a transfer um, gets into the way. So those are the most basic cover sheets. The third cover sheet I'm going to cover is more for specialty items. Um, and so this is extremely useful to have on hand whenever you run across jobs where they may have a plastic zipper on a jacket or plastic buttons on a woven shirt and you want to protect against those heat sensitive items from burning underneath the heat press. And so these are we call flexible application pads. Um, anytime you run into anything heat sensitive, leather bags, um, shoes, the, again, the plastic buttons, the plastic zippers, this is good to place over those items. And the way I recommend using a flexible application pad um, is I don't recommend using it as your standard cover sheet. So if I want to use a cover sheet for everything, all of my t-shirts, all of my jobs, I'm going to still stick with one of those first two cover sheets that we looked at. This cover sheet is actually going to be uh, more for those heat sensitive items, simply because when I go to apply this and it's applying over an item, it's going to take out the heat. That's why it's good for protecting heat sensitive fabrics or materials from burning. But when it takes out some of that heat, it also can cause some issues with application and durability. And so we want to try to avoid those things from happening. Um, and so I would recommend if you use this, just placing it over maybe the plastic buttons, having your transfer still up on the um, side without that covering it. Same thing, if I'm using something that's maybe a leather bag, it's not going to be laundered, then I'm okay to just use this over the entire bag for printing. But it's always good to have on hand, so just in case that zip up hoodie that you had ordered, you were, you were thinking it was going to be a metal zipper and it's plastic, this is good to have on hand to protect those um, plastic zippers from melting. And so speaking of zippers, when we start to think about printing items um, and we want to be able to get them um, printed flatly, printed effectively, we want to print more items with the heat press, and we want to print more efficiently. Um, I recommend a few different things for that. So being able to get things item, or items flat and printed, like for example that jacket that has the zipper. I can use heat printing pillows or print perfect pads. And so heat printing pillows come in a variety of sizes. I have three different options that I'm showing here. If I go to print an item like a zip up jacket, and I'm just going to grab one that I have placed over here to load on there. When I go to print an item like this, if I'm going to use, uh, let's say I'm going to print the back of this for a large print location, I would be concerned with this metal zipper getting into the way and printing through the back of my jacket. Likewise, I'd be worried when I print at the front of this as well. So if I go to print the back or the front, either way I need to have something that isolates that location. I could load in a print perfect pad, or a uh, heat printing pillow, excuse me. The heat printing pillows are basically just Teflon coated foam boards, so these are even often used for sublimation to help um, from getting too much of a hard line or getting a paper mark that's a little bit hard um, because this is actually going to soften up the edges. It's actually a soft piece of foam that's just covered in that Teflon coating. So this goes directly inside the jacket. Now once I load that item, uh, once I go to load my transfer on and heat apply it, it helps to avoid any seams or zippers. And so when you start to think about offering items or if your uh, customers sometimes bring items in for you to print, that are outside of the normal items you source that you print very effectively. It's good to have a set of these pillows. I'd probably recommend getting the full set rather than just one because 
That way you're kind of prepared. This one's going to work well for my sleeves and legs. This one's going to be a little bit smaller for left chest logos, children's apparel, onesies, all that good stuff. So the difference between a heat printing pillow, like I've just loaded into this item, and a print perfect pad is that this pillow gives me a light to medium pressure. And so for most heat transfers, if I'm using a heat transfer vinyl or a digital transfer, even inkjet transfers, they tend to only need a medium or a light pressure. So I can still achieve that even with this soft pillow inside the item. Now when I look at a transfer like a screen printed transfer or any transfer that recommends a firm pressure to get application, maybe you're doing um, the heat transfer foil and, and adhesive where it needs a firm pressure at the end, then I'm going to want to switch to a print perfect pad. And this is a little bit denser than a mouse pad, but basically it works the same way. Um, they come in a variety of sizes, so this is one of the smallest, but I could certainly purchase a larger sheet. I can cut it to the size I want it to be. Um, so I could get a big sheet and cut a few of these left chest logos to have at multiple heat presses. And then if I was printing this left chest logo, this small one would just load right in here and it would give me that accurate firm pressure that I want. So it's got that dense feel versus the pillow. So in heat printing accurately, um, the pillows as well as the print perfect pads will help you to achieve accurate application. When I place this in here, it's actually pulling out the and raising up that print location. So the zipper, seams, all that stuff's not going to get into the way of the application. The last thing I use for accurate printing, and this is actually going to help to speed up production as well. You saw as I was loading the pillows or the pads in, um, there's obviously a lot of work that needs to be done to try to get them straight, to get them loaded in there. You're moving around a lot. And so a lot of decorators, if they have a heat press that allows for um, more interchangeable platens and things like that, then they kind of usually go that route because it helps to speed up the production and allows you to print much more quickly. And so I'll move this aside here so I can just swap out this platen and kind of show you how it works. But basically this heat press as well as the clam style heat press that I was working on, um, anything if you have a Hotronics clam that's been manufactured in the last... I believe five, four to five years, um, that usually should have a quick change latch underneath here. So this one has a gold knob. They now today have a silver latch underneath. And that way I can undo that and quickly change them out. If you have a machine that's a Hotronics that's a little bit older, they still have interchangeable platens that you can use to speed up production when you're doing large items. Um, they just have two bolts underneath you have to take out before you can drop the new size in. It's just not the same latch system. So now I can drop in a smaller size. Let's say, for example, I'm going to be printing a item. I could do this. I could use that same um, jacket, or if I'm going to be doing a tote bag and printing that print location, the same principles apply. Now this platen is going to allow me to get more accurate printing of the item by quickly threading it on and printing. And so if I was printing 50 of these for an order, it's much quicker for me just to change that platen out, load them on, load them off, rather than laying this up on top of my platen, loading in a print perfect pad, filling to make sure it's got the right pressure, sliding it in a little bit more. So it just speeds up production a lot better having that interchangeable platen. Karen, have I had any questions that have come in so far on some of the accessories I've shown? If you had to pick one, would you suggest print perfect pads or pillows for decorating onesies when the snaps get in the way? I would recommend probably the pillow depending on what you're placing on the onesie. Um, if you're just doing heat transfer um, vinyl where you're mostly just doing CAD cut materials, then I would just recommend sticking with the, um, the pillow. It's going to give you the softer edge. The 6x10 platen that I have here, if you're able to do interchangeable platens, is also really helpful because it tends to be the perfect size for anywhere from 3 months upwards of 18 months for getting those snaps off of it there. All right, looks like I'm good on questions for now. So I wanted to cover, see a couple other tools. Oh, the other other one I wanted to cover for printing is just heat seal tape. So I don't have that here, but it's always good to have a roll of heat seal tape on hand. So it's actually a blue tape that can be heat applied over. It's good for if you're doing items in maybe a unique print location or if the transfer doesn't have a sticky backing and you're worried about it sliding before it's printed. That way the transfer stays in place. I can heat apply directly over top of it. It's not like a masking tape or it's not going to leave any adhesive behind. 
but it holds it down in place and then you can just peel it right back off. So heat seal tape is another accessory that I recommend. I'm going to head back over to the table and cover a couple of extra things before I talk about transfers as well. And so when I look at printing items, um, some other heat press tools that I recommend keeping on hand. One is not really a heat press tool, but it'll be very helpful. It's a lint roller. Um, and so if you mix and match anything with clear transfers, so if I'm using clear inkjet transfers or clear laser transfer papers, um, even clear digital transfers, when the garments, um, although to the visible eye, the garments don't usually look like they have lint, although some of them do, if I could just take a lint roller across that real quick before I apply those clear transfers, that helps to keep any um, lint from being trapped in on the garment behind that transfer. And so a clear transfer would show that through simply because there's no opaque backing blocking those. So a lint roller is always good to have on hand. The other thing I wanted to cover is a heat press test kit or a heat press gun. So um, it's always good to calibrate your machine and being able to make sure it's running accurately over time. And so I recommend um, personally over you know, six months being able to calibrate your machine. Some companies do it longer. Um, some companies do it in a quicker time span depending on the use and how often they're using your machine. And so that um, calibration is, um, I would recommend checking the temperature, making sure it's running accurately. You could purchase a heat gun from any local home improvement store, a Lowe's, a Home Depot, um, or I could also use a um, heat press strips. And so these strips are actually able to be purchased from stalls. Um, they come in a pack with a, with a, a few extras, so you have them for multiple um, options. But I basically would just peel one of these strips off, place it down onto my heat press, press it, and then the numbers that it reads on the strip, I would want to make sure it matches what my machine's reading. Um, if it doesn't match, you certainly would want, would want to get hold of the manufacturer and find out what you need to do to recalibrate. Um, we all know that you know, accurate application, accurate temperature, temperature, pressure, time is really key to making sure you keep a durable transfer. And so if you can ensure your heat press is still getting accurate heat with some of these tools, then it'll help you um, just run your business more successfully. And so it's good to have on hand. Um, a lot of the times if customers call me and they say, this transfer is not sticking, um, there's a couple things I always recommend. Check your pressure, which we just went over some of the tips for getting accurate pressure on your items with pillows and pads and platens. And then I also you know, recommend they check their heat press. So making sure it's running at the right temperature is key, especially if you're noticing a transfer over multiple items not applying correctly. And so those are some good things to safeguard against that and keep on hand there. Next I want to talk about some different things for heat transfer storage, heat transfer production, all of that stuff that helps. I'm going to share a couple of things with um, screen printed transfers first. Um, the first thing is going to be related to the way that we store our transfers. And so um, when you store your transfers, traditionally you'll get a box from your transfer supplier that they may come in. If you're able to get um, extra boxes like this or keep them on hand. I like to label the boxes on the front and be able to store them on a shelf with clean storage. That way I can easily know, oh yes, this was that transfer for XYZ job. Um, this was for Bob's Landscaping Company. And then anytime I need to reuse those transfers, I can pull them out from this nice storage box. Um, this one's good for screen printed transfers. There's also storage boxes for other styles of transfers. This one's good for numbers and it has individual slots. So you can actually purchase this box from stalls um, in addition to um, the sorters on the inside. So it's even good for sorting out swatches or different things in your shop, keeping letters and numbers organized and all of that as well. Close that back up there. All right, now when I'm, score when I'm storing screen printed transfers, I like to store them um, one thing about storing screen printed transfers and keeping them durable is to make sure that they're um, kept in a low humidity, low moisture type situation and keeping them clean from debris and dirt. And so I like to store them in a, a Ziploc bag. These are just simple Ziploc bags here. I could again write if I have multiple transfers inside one box, I can um, write which one they belong to or which job. And then I like to throw in a uh, silica gel packet. So if you purchase um, any bags and you're printing those, save these. Um, not only will they be good if your, heat, uh, your cell phone breaks and you need to dry out the uh, 
If you drop it in water, you need to dry out your cell phone battery, but it's good for pulling moisture out of your transfers as well. So I can put one of, a couple of those silica gel packets in the Ziploc bag, sell it up, and then I can store it in my box for later. And so those are some good tips for storage. Um, when it comes to um, getting your gar transfers out to apply them either from storage or from the shop, it's always good to inspect them. So if you're able to have a light table to check the transfers, making sure um, there's no ink that's off, that's maybe you can't see to the visible eye that may be causing some areas of um, where the inks kind of come off and it's not going to look like a quality transfer once it's applied. I can look for that. Sometimes even just holding it up to the light will help you see through the transfer paper and make sure your ink's all in uh, place ready to be heat applied. And then you'll notice this transfer here that I was just looking at um, is actually a good version of a gang sheet. And so an easy way to cut cost if you're ordering screen printed transfers like this is to gang multiple images up on the transfer sheet together. Um, this way I can order all these at once, cut my cost, order less sheets, and save myself some money. But the challenge is when I go to just grab a standard pair of scissors and I start trimming these apart and I take them over to my heat press and now I want to align them straight, my lines are probably not going to be straight, although there's grid lines on the back that can help um, trim some of these apart. One thing that will help you in making sure you have a straight and accurate line as well as ensuring that everything's cut correctly um, is to just invest in a paper cutter. This is a small paper cutter. We again picked that up from a Home Depot type store or a, a home craft store. I think I got this one from Michaels. Um, and this allows us to just easily trim the transfers, get that straight clean line and then store them for later or take them to the heat press for application. And so those are some helpful tips for screen printed transfers, some useful accessories and boxes, just simple Ziploc bags with silica gel packets, um, paper cutters. I want to move more now to um, vinyl cutting and talking a little bit about vinyl transfers because as we look at and we move to production of vinyl transfers, so there's of course some extra tools and things that can help just speed up production, help, up store, um, help with storage and everything like that. So I'm going to head over just next to the table here to the um, weeding table and I want to talk about some things that you can have on hand for weeding products. And so. Um, the first thing I have here is an easy weeding table. If you haven't seen this table, it's actually a heated table that goes up to three different settings. So I can go from um, 110, 110 degrees upwards of 130. There's three settings, 110, 120, and 130. It's going to heat up any hot peel material. And so the product I have on here right now is CAD Cut Glitter Flake. Um, and this material, once it's heated up, because it's a hot peel, actually weeds away easier. And so it's easier for me to peel this without a lot of extra breakage simply because of this table. And so I'm able to get a much more accurate weed there. You'll also notice I was using a little blue tool. This is called a weeding tool. Um, this is helpful for whether you're weeding on the table or off the table. Much more helpful than um, being able to use like an X-Acto knife or something like that to weed your materials or tweezers. Um, because this tool actually has a little, it looks almost like a dental tool. It has additional pick areas, so if I'm going to pick out centers of a design, I can actually pull out multiple pick areas and then discard them. And so having that weeding tool helps me to hold them all on there. Once I get enough of them, I can throw them in the garbage or I can just start dis, um, discard them. Another thing I usually keep on hand is a little sticky um, this is actually a carrier sheet or a piece of mask. It's been left from something else that I've heat applied that had a sticky backing. It was fashion film. I can set like something like this on the side of where I'm weeding. So if I have a lot of these extra scraps, I can kind of stick them to it and I don't have to worry about them coming back into place on my other sticky carrier materials. That's really helpful when you're using a product like um, fashion film that has a really sticky backing and you're getting a lot of little pick areas, a lot of pool areas, and you're worried about them getting in place um, or getting into the way of your design. That way I could stick them to that little extra carrier sheet, set that off to the side, and that was something that would have been waste anyways. It's left over from something I heat applied earlier today, and I just pull it to the side as I'm picking off those little tiny pick areas, and sometimes those little cavities, if they get back onto the carrier of your actual transfer, can ruin your design if you don't notice them at the heat press. So it's nice to quickly stick them there, and go back to weeding my job, um, either on my weeding table or not. 
Um, now this table, in addition to being heated, has a couple of extra things. It's not lighted, but it does have um, the option for you to raise it up to a, multi to a higher um, incline, or I could drop it completely flat as well if I have multiple people working. And so if I'm looking for something that's going to speed up the production of my um, production of my heat transfer vinyl designs, then this tool gives me a dedicated thing to do so. Um, I can set it on a table, I can set it on a cart like I have here and kind of shuttle it around as I need it to be. The clip at the top here just helps to hold the designs in place as I'm weeding so I can just kind of pull with both hands, I don't have to hold it in place um, and kind of move it around that way. So that's helpful. If you don't feel like you're at the stage where you're ready to have a dedicated machine, maybe you're a home-based business and you're just the only operator, um, so you're going to be weeding your vinyl designs and also operating at your heat press, you could use your heat press platen as well. Hold down that um, and warm up that platen, you know, with your normal 320 degrees, an extra 10, 20 seconds, get it nice and warm, lay your transfer design on there and then weed away the graphics to get it to weed quicker. Karen, do I have any questions coming in so far on the weeding table or some vinyl tips? Could you give the exact name of the table again and where it's available for purchase? Sure. The table is the Easy Weeding Table, E-Z, um, spelt just E-N-Z, and then it's available from stalls. And so that's a great little tool to have there. The Easy Weeders, I always recommend having those on hand just simply for ease of weeding, being able to speed that up. And then the weeding table, you'll notice, has a little compartment for storing your weeders, your scissors, and everything like that. But if you don't have the easy weeding table, just having something next to your weeding location, um, a little pen holder you picked up in an office depot store to put your weeding tools, your tweezers, your scissors. Um, speaking of scissors, always having a few extra pairs on hand. I know weeders and scissors are probably the top two things that we lose in our location, but I find that if you have a spot for them in the weeding area, a, a mug or a cup or something where they know this is where these tools go back to, they tend to usually go back in the cup and they don't get floated around the office quite as easy and it helps to keep things organized in your weeding location as well. And so that's good to have on hand. We went over the sticky carrier for extra little sticky pieces to stick down to the item. And the last thing I wanted to cover, if I can find it, is... I don't see it here, but I am going to reference it. Um, extra blades, extra blade holders. If you do a lot of cutting, especially of different products like the glitter material that I showed you here, then I recommend using an extra or keeping some extra blades and blade holders on hand. That way, if you're doing a large job and you're cutting a lot of designs and you're noticing that they're not weeding as accurately, the cutting's not correctly, then it either is going to be your blade um, needs to be changed out, it's dulled down from the large job that you've done, or it could be that debris, um, some debris or some particles from maybe the glitter material have got up into that blade holder and over time it just kind of got worn down and so you're going to want to change that out, drop in a new blade holder and that will help you to cut more accurately as well. And so it's good to have those tools available, especially if you're in a pinch in the middle of a large run. You don't want to wait a day or two to get it from your supplier. You'll have them there at your shop and so blades and blade holders for sure. That covers me um, some of the weeding tips I wanted to share. And so I'm going to head back to the table and talk a little bit more about um, a few different weeding tips and then also some storage and organization things. So the other weeding tips I have, although I don't have examples here, um, would be a cutting mat for cutting small scraps that your cutter won't read. So um, if you own a silhouette, they tend to come with what they call a cutting mat. So if I'm cutting a small piece of a design, maybe I just need a one inch by two inch design for some small personalization and I have a scrap that my cutter won't read, you can actually trick it by either purchasing a cutting mat for, let's say, the graft. If you own a graft tech cutter, they sell them through graft tech where I could purchase a cutting mat. Um, or I could use one from somewhere like something like a silhouette to help trick um, the machine to read a larger design. You do just want to keep in mind when you line up your graphics they're going to fit within the space of your material because if I load on a uh, cutting mat that's 12 inches by 12 inches and I only have 3 inches by 1 inch to cut on, then I need to make sure my design's going to fit in that spot as well. Um, being able to have a lighted table to see cut lines, so cut lines are always challenging to see. So if you can have a lighted table to sometimes see through darker colors or different materials, that can be helpful for speeding up 
the weeding and then even just adding a simple desk light to the area where you weed and so um, we actually recommend a clip-on light for the top of that easy weeding table because we find that cascading light um, down on it tends to show the cutting lines a little bit better sometimes than a lighting table so being able to have a simple desk lamp on the table that you're weeding on or clipped on to the side of your weeding table that'll be helpful to see those cut lines as well of course those are simple things you would just purchase from a home supply or a um, home depot or a home office supply store um, when it comes to before i get into storage i want to talk about a couple other vinyl accessories in general just color selecting sales tools that are good to have on hand um, first we'll look at selecting colors helping for sales tools this one's going to be um, just some simple swatch colors these are available from stalls for free so if you go to stalls.com on the website you're able to request um, any of the products that you use these are for the glitters um, I have premium plus here for some stretch products thermofilm so if I have an accessory of these maybe I have one um, for my sales reps to use when they're choosing custom or choosing, choosing colors with their customers maybe I just like to keep them on hand at my shop so I know which color to choose this will be really helpful uh, when you're looking at how to choose the right color because it's cut from the exact same material so I'm not looking on a website I'm not looking at a catalog um, so it's really helpful for that um, in addition to some of the vinyl suppliers that recommend that offer these things like stalls does I can also um, get usually fabric swatches from suppliers um, as well as um, screen print and ink suppliers will usually recommend or show those as well so this is actually a catalog from Cavio. Um, and so in addition to having their full catalog spread, they also included all of their fabric swatches. So I can actually see the color of the garment. Again, it helps me to easily match up. Okay, I have this shirt, I have this vinyl color. Which one of these look best together? And so that's a nice little tip um, as well if you can purchase those from your blank apparel suppliers. And Transfer Express also um, sells or offers color selectors that actually comes in their marketing kit that's the least expensive way to do it and it's a nice book with their ink color so the same thing if you're using a lot of screen printed transfers not cutting a lot of vinyl you can still get color selectors to choose the right color for the job that you're doing and so those are very helpful to have on hand um, the other thing is to um, hang a decorated garment to visually show finishes and so you know as well as I know that your customers are visual people and so if you have a showroom or if you go out to sales calls being able to have a sample garment that maybe shows um, all of these different finishes so your customer can see what it means if you want to upgrade the logo to glitter or if you want to add a foil finish or if you want it to just be a standard finish um, print with maybe a screen print or a vinyl print being able to have that garment decorated already so they can visually see the colors that they're looking at um, and you could even actually take these swatches and apply them down to the garment and so if you're um, going to be choosing glitter colors then you could have all these applied to maybe a black shirt and then let your customer choose and select um, all of these from basically the colors being applied down to the garment so that's a nice way to showcase the colors that you sell as well um, since these rings come completely undone if I only sell 12 colors of glitter, I probably don't want to show all 40 of these to my customers because I don't want them to pick colors that I don't stock. So I would only choose the 12 colors that I sell, apply those to the t-shirt, and then show them those options. Um, and you can purchase, um, if you don't want to purchase a, a large t-shirt, you could even purchase small mini t-shirts. Um, Stahl sells those in packages of, uh, as well that look kind of like American Girl doll t-shirts. They're very tiny. Those can be helpful for some sales, sample, sales samples as well. Um, in addition to that, oh, I have a sleeper here that fell in for um, vinyl transfers that I missed. It's down on the bottom of my list. Um, being able to store your vinyl transfers once you weed them away. So if we're back to the weeding table, weeded away those glitter designs and I want to store them. Maybe I weed a week ahead of time or a couple days ahead of time before they're being heat pressed. There's two different things that you can use to back them. Um, so that way if they're sticky they don't stick together or they don't pick up debris from your shop or um, anything else like dust. Um, the first one is actually going to become, it usually probably comes free in your packaging if you purchase your CAD cut materials from stalls. So traditionally um, in a package that has multiple rolls from stalls they'll use this pink liner material to help keep the rolls from banging around. This will stick really nicely to the sticky backing on any of the heat transfer vinyl from stalls. Peels off nicely so it doesn't stick um, and cause any problems when you get to the heat press. 
that's nice to have because it's free. It comes in your packaging. So I know we save it here in multiple boxes so that we can pull it out and store transfers as needed. Um, if you don't have that, you can purchase a liner. Stahl sells a, um, they call it a magic mask liner. It's basically just a coated mat uh, mask material that you can line the back of the transfer paper with and then discard it or reuse it multiple times um, after you've used it. Same thing with this. I could use this multiple times, so I'm not going to want to throw it away immediately. Um, as long as it fits the transfer size, I can easily reuse that over and over again. So last, I want to share some tips for storage and for organization. Um, and so a first couple things are going to be regarding um, vinyl. And so I want to show some pictures that we have. Um, the first one's going to be of um, some rolls that actually have labels sticking out of them. So you're noticing the um, storage system that this company uses and they actually have, you're noticing the rolls are standing on um, floor holders that have some pegs sticking out that are holding up all the rolls. And then inside those rolls, they have placed labels that actually stick outside of the rolls. And these types of things are traditionally able to be purchased from sign supply stores that sell sign vinyl. And so those labels sticking out can tell me the color, they can tell me the material, they can tell me the supplier. And then you'll notice on the outside of the rolls that they have um, roll clips. And the roll clips, and I think we have an extra photo of this as well, but the roll clips actually sit on the outside. Um, you're seeing that orange clip there and a close-up there of the um, label system. But the roll clips actually help to just simply clip onto the material and hold it together on those pegs so it's not falling off and falling all over the place. They're just little plastic clips and help to hold it in place. And so the nice thing about um, clips like that, which again would come from a sign supply store, is that I'm not using tape and worried about the material kind of sorting back um, or kind of peeling back and ruining some of the material, which sometimes happen if you use a aggressive tape over the edge of your roll. So I'd recommend usually a masking tape if you're taping the edges of your roll so it doesn't do that to the vinyl. Um, another tip is you could use a rubber band. Depending on the material and the thickness of the rubber band, sometimes that could distort the material as well. So those roll clips are really nice because they hold, hold everything together in more of a light way. Um, so those are some things to share just for labeling, roll clips for storage. Obviously, you got to see that holder that they were using for the floor stand to hold up their rolls. There's a variety of uh, vinyl storage solutions that are available depending on your location, how many rolls you store. Um, so I'm going to share a few of those. Um, there are manufactured roll racks. So I could buy one that's actually a um, complete wall rack that has pegs sticking out of it that I could just load my vinyl rolls onto. Those, again, are usually available from sign supply stores. Um, you saw the floor version in that photo that we had shared there. And if you're uh, maybe a home-based shop or you have um, a smaller location, some other things I use, filing cabinets. So being able to store multiple rolls that fit lengthwise in the filing cabinet, um, being able to use a dresser drawer. Of course, you want to make sure the item that you're choosing to put the rolls in will fit the roll width. So if I'm using a filing cabinet, I need it to be 20 inches or 21 inches so that my 20 inch roll fits inside of there. Um, other people will even use things like wine racks. So if you're just using, um, just looking for something small to store maybe six or 12 rolls, you could get a floor wine rack from any kind of home supply store and load the rolls right into there or load sheets of vinyl into there. Um, same thing with extra scraps of vinyl and the way that you store that. So a couple of different ways to store that. I could take sheets of um, scraps and load them into Rubbermaid containers or bins, labeling the outside. Maybe this is all fashion film. Maybe this is all blue materials. Whatever works best for how you um, stock your products. If you only stock, um, let's say, fashion film and glitter flake, then you could easily store them by color because everything that's blue and not glitter in this bin is going to be able to be used because it's fashion film. Now, if I use Premium Plus sometimes and Thermofilm and fashion film and they all kind of look the same and I'd have a hard time distinguishing, then you may want to separate those um, in either different Rubbermaid containers or a Rubbermaid drawer that sorts through all of those things easily as well. Um, even if you wanted to, you could purchase, if you were in a home, kind of a, um, had a door in your shop, you could use on the inside a hanging shoe organizer and be able to kind of roll up your scraps and sort them into the shoe organizer and 
kind of organize them that way um, with maybe labels on the shoe organizer. That way you can see the rolls and the materials and stuff that you have and a hanging matter. So that for me tends to be, if I can see things hanging just like in my closet, I can usually see that they're available. Sometimes if I tuck them into a drawer or a filing cabinet, I may forget they were there. So use what's best for you in the system for organizing, but those are some good tips there for especially storing your rolls. Um, labeling is huge. So any way you can label shelves, any way you can label um, your Rubbermaid containers, any of that will help. So if anybody else comes in and tries to grab material from your shop, they know where things are as well. Um, some other things just to help with production and a general tips for storage or organization. Um, using wheeled carts for staging garments or finished um, garments. So if you're in a larger production setting, um, you can't really see it, but the weeding table I have is actually on a wheeled plastic cart. So you could use wheeled carts to stage garments and move them from area to area. Um, so if you have a weeding area, they could um, prep and stage the garments there and then wheel them over to the heat press for your heat press operators to work the order. And so those are good for that. Um, wearing something as simple as a pocketed apron. Um, when we are crazy here with production and we're weeding a bunch of transfers, we're heat applying a bunch of stuff, I tend to put on an apron um, and I use it to hold my weeder, my scissors, my tools, so I'm not leaving them in multiple locations of our um, office. And same thing, if you're moving from multiple areas of your shop, you know you always have your weeder um, and all of your tips and all your tools available in that little apron. And it can just be a small pocket, um, three pocket apron. You keep those little tools in there with um, it. Um, ample trash cans. So you would be surprised how valuable it is to have multiple trash cans around your location, especially if you're dealing a lot with scraps from weeding, um, papers from transfers at the heat press. Being able to have them strategically placed um, in smart areas will help to um, not only minimize the steps of your workers or yourself as you're throwing things away, but it'll help to reduce clutter so you don't get a lot of extra scraps um, piled up on your weeding table because they can quickly and easily disperse of them inside their trash can. And so that's helpful to have as well. Um, and the last thing I have just to have on hand, which I think is an incredibly useful tool, I think it's at number, some around number 40, I think, for the list of items that I've shared with you guys today. Um, and that is solvent remover. And so while I know all of you don't make mistakes, um, sometimes it happens that little piece of vinyl got stuck on the edge of a transfer and it transferred to the shirt. I don't really want to throw away the shirt and ruin the cost of the garment and the transfer. I need something to quickly fix it. Likewise, if I spell a name wrong and it's just one letter, I want to recut it and replace it down. Um, I can use a solvent remover. And so the solvent remover, they call it lettering solvent remover. Um, traditionally, the way it works is you would flip the garment inside out. Um, using gloves, you would take the um, solvent remover on a rag or on a Q-tip or something rub it on the back of the adhesive side, and then you can peel off the vinyl. Um, before you use it, I do recommend testing an area of the garment to make sure it's not going to discolor it and take away um, the shading. So you can use an inconspicuous area like underneath the armpit, maybe on the hem on the inside or something to see if it changes the and, and discolors it before you use it to remove the transfer. Um, so those are some good tips and things to share for your heat printing business. Hopefully um, over the last, I think, 45 minutes, you guys have come up with some unique uh, ways that you can use these accessories, simple ones, as well as more advanced to help improve your production. Karen, have I gotten any questions additional in? Okay, perfect. Well, I'll let you guys head off to your shop and have fun um, printing more uh, efficiently and more organized. Thanks for coming.